What's up everybody, Justin here from Poorly Reviewed Beer. As I promised in yesterday's video review, today I'm starting the Sierra Nevada Beer Camp Across the World Collaboration Pack. Uh, Sierra Nevada, of course, based in Chico, California and Mills River, North Carolina now. And uh, last year they did six different beers with uh, numerous stateside collaborators. They, I believe they had uh, as many, I think five collaborators per beer and kind of did regional styles. Um, for fewer brewers, but uh, they certainly expanded the scope, and I think really they put it best when they describe uh, the Beer Camp series. Uh, Sierra Nevada says, Brewing with your friends is what Beer Camp is all about. We called on 12 breweries, 6 stateside, and 6 overseas to come together for a No Limits one-time-only collaboration pack. Uh, I think you'll really see the No Limits uh, part of this really come through in today's beers. I'm doing two beers today. That's the way the series will go. Uh, it'll be six installments, and I'll do a, uh, a one stateside and one overseas beer each time. I'm just randomly picking, really, but um, a couple of very, very different styles in today's today's uh, pair. So you'll see that that uh, that no limits uh, marker come through in uh, in these two beers. Um, I'm not I'm not going to do the the series consecutively like I did last year. I had uh, six consecutive reviews doing all, doing all these beers. Really, I just have too much good stuff in my uh, in my fridge to um, be stuck on Sierra Nevada beers for the next three weeks. So you'll be seeing these beers rolled out again two at a time um, over the next couple of months. Uh, enough talking. Let's get to the beers. Uh, this is the first collaboration. This is an overseas collaborator, Eyinger Brewery, Brewery in Eying, Bavaria, Germany. And this is their Dunkelweiss. Here's what they have to say about this beer. We are brewing a classic Bavaria-style Dunkelweiss, or dark wheat beer. Eyinger's wheat beers are among the best produced anywhere in the world. We decided to bring together our two, our two approaches to the style and create an all-new, rich, and multi-version of the style. It's brewed in our open fermenter to allow the authentic Bavarian yeast strain to shine, with complex aromas of banana bread, caramel malt, and clove. 5.7% ABV, 10 IBU. Uh, Hefeweizen yeast was used, as were German tradition hops. Malts used are two-row pale, wheat acidulated, and carafa three. All right, let's check this out. So a bit of a different glass, as some of the folks on YouTube have uh, been telling me. Um, so obviously much narrower, so the head's uh, a good size, couple fingers there. The color is, I would say, kind of like a, a caramel brown and slightly hazy. The glass was in, the, in the, the freezer for a while, though it's been sitting out for a little while, but it still might have just a hair of chill haze um, on the glass itself. But no, it's, it's certainly, uh, I can tell, just tell looking at it, there's certainly uh, certainly some cloudiness in this beer. And it just kind of uh, lightens up as I hold up to the light to just kind of a, a fairly, fairly typical like iced tea brown color uh, with some yellow-orange highlights um, around the edges, especially the bottom of the glass. All right, let's give this a try. Mm -hmm. Plenty of spice, lots of clove to it. Maybe not quite as malt forward as I was expecting, but uh, quite tasty. I am getting some of the bready notes now that I uh, have a little bit more of it. Again, a lot of traditional wheat beer uh, type of flavors, so uh, I think that's where they're coming with coming up with the, the banana bread um, type of descriptor, though I can't say I've had a ton of banana bread personally, but I'm certainly getting a, certainly getting a little bit of a banana note that you get from a lot of uh, Hefeweizens or wheat beers. And that's the yeast they use, as I mentioned, um, as well as the spicy notes. But yeah, super tasty. Uh, just a, a little bit of a, a malty sweetness from the, the caramel malts, I would say. But 
Also, maybe pushing towards a little bit of that, uh, something, kind of the, the, the wheat beer sweetness that's, like, a little more kind of pure sugary than, um, than kind of a, a bit of a darker caramel sugar, sugariness. Hmm. But again, uh, very, very tasty. That is the, the Dunkelweiss. Uh, to me, fairly straightforward, in my opinion. Maybe getting something, maybe kind of the the spices coming together, but I'm almost getting kind of like a an iced tea kind of a, a note to it as well. Yeah, so, um, yes, yeah, so that's the, the Dunkelweiss from Sierra Nevada and Iyengar. Let's go ahead and move on to the next beer. Okay, next beer up is our stateside offering for today. It comes from uh, Avery Brewing in North Boulder, Colorado. This is dry hopped barley wine style ale. Uh, here are the notes from the brewer. We're brewing a dry hopped barley wine style ale. Avery's founder, Adam Avery, was eager to brew this style and told us this story. Sierra Nevada Bigfoot barley wine inspired him to try his hand at the style leading to the creation of Hog Heaven, an Avery Brewing classic. The idea behind this beer for beer camp across the world is actually not to collaborate at all, but rather to brew the exact recipes for Sierra Nevada's Bigfoot and the exact, re and, and the exact recipe for Avery's Hog Heaven and blend the two distinct finished beers together and bottle condition a new version of these two classic beers. The resulting brew is lovingly dubbed Big Hog or Hogfoot, depending on the brewer's preference. It's big, intense, and hoppy. Great fresh or the perfect candidate for aging down the line. 9.4% ABV, 90 IBU. Uh, ale yeast was used along with Zeus Chinook Cascade and Centennial hops, two row pale and caramel malts. Now I can't say I've had a whole lot of barley wines in my life. Uh, typically they are on the strong side for me. And that's going to sit up right at the edge of the glass, I think. Awesome. Uh, so again, I got the uh, kind of the closest thing I had to a, uh, a snifter glass. So, um, this is more a Belgian style of, uh, uh, glassware, but that's all right. Uh, pushing towards a reddish hue in the, in the glass and it's, pretty mostly see-through maybe just a little bit of a, a little bit of cloudiness there but mostly see-through good amount of head again for a bit of a smaller smaller mouth glass than what we're normally used to and a pretty solid orange color as i hold it up to the light but yeah kind of a burnt orange maybe pushing towards a reddish uh just a hair Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let this uh, uh, head settle down a minute and pour the rest of the beer. I still probably probably a couple ounces, maybe about an ounce or so left in the glass, and then we will get to drinking. Be right back. Okay, the head is uh, settled down mostly, but I'm getting impatient, so uh, let's go ahead and drink. Hmm. Wow. So again, I can't say I've had a whole ton of um, barley wines in my life. Maybe just probably a handful, less than a handful in my five, six years of legitimate craft beer drinking. The balance on this is really neat. It is... It is powerful. It is without a doubt a big beer. But the... Kind of the, the, the two components, the, the, the dry hop portion and the barley wine portion are really doing a nice job of cutting into each other without... Uh, sacrificing a lot of again the the intensity 
um, but it doesn't make an overwhelmingly hoppy, bitter experience, or it doesn't make an overwhelmingly uh, cloyingly sweet or super boozy kind of experience um, like could happen on the barley wine side. Sorry, I got a fly buzzing around. They like the uh, the barley wine. So, um, yeah. Um, frankly, I'm having a little bit of trouble kind of picking out the flavors. Uh, just kind of a, a fairly standard, uh, like, barley wine sweetness to it. Just, a, a, again, a hint of boozy sweetness. Maybe a little bit of pine from the, the hoppy side, but uh, I'm, again, I'm not really getting any, like, kind of citrus or... Uh, maybe a little bit of a grassy note there as well from the hoppy side, but it is very different though. Uh, so again, I'm probably not quite the most qualified to to be able to describe this type of beer. But again, I I think the the most impressive thing for me and what's standing out most for me is how kind of the, the two sides of the beer really serve to uh, complement one another pretty well and create like a full picture uh, where nothing's neither side is really overwhelming I'm, I'm getting the bitterness ramping up a little bit in the aftertaste but I mean otherwise uh, it's I'm, I'm enjoying it it's it's not again not always the the thing i would go for and again i i think i'm just not not used to barley wines probably if i drank them a lot more i might, might be a little more uh fond of this but um certainly i'm gonna drink the rest of it and uh, I'm, I'm i'm enjoying it but um i can't i'm afraid there's not a whole whole ton i can say about the other uh, dry hopped barley wine style ale there's a reason it's called poorly reviewed beer folks but, um, so those are the first two beers from the uh, Sierra Nevada Beer Camp Across the World Series. I think we could all agree that, again, no limits on what they're going to be doing. Some uh, some crazy styles and some uh, crazy offerings. I think there's like a ginger lager in there and uh, a white IPA, which isn't super uncommon anymore. But uh, I'm very excited to see the other 10 beers of this series, even if they all aren't uh, home runs. Um, at least for me, as as the um, this barley wine style ale is. But that's it for this edition of Poorly Re Reviewed Beer. You can check out all my reviews, both video and written, along with news, commentary, and more, at poorlyreviewedbeer.com. Also, check out PRB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped. You'll find all those links and usernames in the description below. If you're so inclined, please like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.